Hey everybody, I'm the Linux Gamer, and I just played Grim Fandango Remastered. It's a re-release of the classic LucasArts adventure game, written by Tim Schafer and developed by Double Fine Productions. The remastered edition of this game was published today, with simultaneous releases on every platform. In Grim Fandango, you play as Manny Calaveras, a travel agent for the Department of Death. His job is to help the recently deceased find travel deals to the ninth layer of the underworld. Well, something is awry in the land of the dead. A criminal organization is stealing tickets to the Ninth Underworld and selling them to the rich folks who don't deserve them. Manny tries to get ahead of the game by chiefing his co-worker's client, Meche. She seems like she'd be a shoo-in to the Ninth Underworld, but unfortunately Manny soon discovers that the computer's been rigged by the mob to deprive people of their rightful place in heaven. Upon this discovery, Manny's recruited into the Lost Souls Alliance, a group of people who are trying to stop the gangsters and get those deserving dead to the Ninth Underworld. I won't go too much further into the story, since the best part of this game is experiencing it firsthand, but suffice it to say that Tim Schafer's unique sense of humor is all over this one. Grim Fandango was a beautiful game at the time of its first release. It had a unique and iconic style that still holds up to this day. And this remastering is a welcome update. Every character has new high resolution textures, and the developers have integrated an advanced lighting system, enhancing its intentional film noir atmosphere. I'm pleased to say that this game's aesthetic have truly stood the test of time. For this remaster, Double Fine had the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra perform the game's original score. There's nothing like a fantastic orchestra to liven up a piece of music. Get it? Liven? Because everyone's dead? I'll show myself out. Originally released in 1998, virtually nothing in terms of gameplay has changed with Grim Fandango Remastered. This is good, but it's also a bit frustrating. When they say remastered, Double Fine isn't talking about an HD remake. That's a distinct difference. Grim Fandango got a new coat of paint in terms of character textures, but the pre-rendered environments and cutscenes remain in their 4x3 aspect ratio, and their rather limited color palette. I'm not knocking these visuals by any means. As I've said, I believe they stand the test of time. However, there are a few gameplay elements that could have used some modernization. The game doesn't automatically save, which is a shame because it seems like a trivial feature that could have been added for the sake of convenience. Also, pathfinding with the point and click input method still feels a bit off, though noticeably improved from the original. Throughout the game, you solve some of the greatest non sequiturs, uh, I mean, uh, puzzles, in the history of the adventure game genre. You'll be chuckling to yourself as you figure out exactly what it is you're supposed to do. You'll hear rare bits of dialogue when you do something in your fetch quest out of sequence, or you'll start to try someone's patience. Grim Fandango Remastered has several different control schemes to choose from. It can be played in the classic point-and-click adventure game style, or it can be played with a gamepad. Controllers can be used with camera relative or tank controls. Camera relative controls are the more intuitive of the two, and it's what modern gamers have come to expect, whereas tank controls are more like playing with an RC car. I've tried the mouse and the controller, and it feels weird to say, but the controller grew on me. Though there were a few times where I couldn't obtain a crucial story item with the controller, and I had to use the mouse for a split second, the controller felt like a great way to play. One of the coolest little features of this game is that you can flip between the original and the remastered graphics at any time during gameplay. The game performs quite well on Linux, with only minimal hiccups and full motion video stuttering here and there. Grim Fandango Remastered has an in-game concept art browser, which is rad. It also features developer commentary from 14 members of the original development team. I feel like more games need to do this, especially for people like me who are really interested in the process of game development. So I would recommend this game to anyone who loves classic adventure games. If you're a fan of the original Grim Fandango, Tim Schafer's conspicuous style, or humorous games, you'll have a blast with Grim Fandango. It's available for Linux through GOG and Steam. Links are in the description. Have you played Grim Fandango Remastered? What do you think of it? Be sure to tell me in the comments or on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. Feel free to check out the rest of my channel, including my previous IO review. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. Thanks for watching.